uh, is the D is developmental, I is individual differences, and R is relationship-based. Um, it's really the foundational framework of understanding human development and how each person perceives and interacts with the world around them differently. Uh, DR floor time is the application of the into practice. So it's used to help children, young adults, and even adults with a wide range of developmental challenges, uh, which include uh, sensory, motor, uh, emotional, uh, and uh, development challenges, learning and developmental challenge challenges. <clears throat> Uh, it really uses the power of relationship and human connection to help uh, develop and promote uh, the capacities for uh, shared social problem solving, communication, and self-regulation, along with reflective, creative thinking and reasoning. Uh, and that's mainly used uh, to help support those on the autism, with autism spectrum disorder. <clears throat> the main way we promote DIR and DR floor time is through our training program, where uh, we teach courses for uh, professionals and parents who want to learn more about what we do in DIR and DRF floor time. We offer short courses from uh, three hour to 12 hour courses uh, that normally talk about a wide range of topics like diversity uh, and ethics. Some of them are be sure, which is uh, understanding and uh, supporting parents' expectations. Um, let's talk about race and uh, ethical considerations in autism related services. And the other side of that is we have our DR floor time training program curriculum uh, for professionals that want to be floor time practitioners. Uh, and uh, if they go through all of the courses, they can also teach uh, DR and DR floor time to others. Uh, on the other side of ICDL, we have the International Institute where we provide services to parents and professionals. Uh, we bring top DR experts uh, from around the world to provide these services. Um, <coughs> Uh, our main service for our institute is D the DR Home Program, which is a virtual parent uh, coaching program for parents that want to use DR floor time uh, at home and with their children. So that being said, Moodle is kind of the heart uh, of our operations. It's where we have all our classes. We have a, a, an uh, online international conference every year that's actually happening next month. Um, it's our hub for all of our members. And uh, it's where we provide all the resources for any of the on-site courses that we do, because almost all of our courses are ex exclusively online. Uh, occasionally, we do do on-site courses mainly for um, uh, organizations. So uh, bouncing off of that, I want to talk a little bit about our mission. And it's impossible to talk about our mission without first touching on what neurodiversity is. Uh, and it's a newer concept. It's defined by Oxford languages as the range of differences in individual brain function and behavior traits regarded as normal variation in the human population. And that's usually used especially in the context of autism spectrum, autistic spectrum disorder. Uh, and what ICDO wants to see is a world where we embrace neurodiversity and individual differences so we can help promote those individuals um, to live happy, healthy lives and achieve their fullest potential. There's too much prejudice in the world against uh, those who are neurodiverse and those who are individually different. Um, so we believe that we can help people by promoting and championing, uh, championing a uh, developmental and relationship-based approach. <clears throat> so now that you know about uh, what we do and our mission, uh, I want to talk about our operation strategy and how Moodle plays a key organizational role in that. First is we leverage open source and low cost platforms like Moodle. Um, <clears throat> we're an international not-for-profit, we're small but growing, and we don't have the resources to spend a ton of money on expensive programs, and it's really been vital in our ability to grow as an organization um, uh, by leveraging these open source and low cost platforms. Um, it's, allowed, it's really allowed us to focus on our mission uh, and not have to worry about uh, the cost of keeping these operations running. Second is we want to increase our efficiency as much as possible. The time spent operating our, our, operating our organization is time spent, um, time not spent on achieving our vision, uh, going after our mission, uh, and it's really important for us to just get everything running as uh, efficiently as possible so we can have the human resources for our mission. And the third is we want to continue to learn. It's, it's very vital. As soon as you become stagnant in operations, that's when uh, things become less efficient. Uh, you're missing out on anything that, like, new uh, updates that come out. Uh, I'm excited to see what AI can do for our organization. Um, 
So it's really important to continue to learn. And keeping the operation strategy in mind, uh, I want to talk about how we utilize Moodle. Uh, like I said, Moodle is really the heart uh, of our training program, and it's really the heart uh, of our operations as a whole as an organization. And we follow a few methods uh, that are simple, but they really help us to become consistent and provide a good service um, to our participants. And as well, um, offers consistency to our training leaders who can depend on the resources that we provide. So first, which is very basic, is just standard format for all of our course pages and across Moodle. Um, this seems pretty basic, but you'd be surprised at how many organizations don't have this. It makes it, if you don't have it, it makes it unwelcoming. Um, it makes it harder to use, just the platform as a whole. Uh, so having a standard format across everything uh, makes everything more, uh, makes the usability of the platform way better for the participants as well as uh, the training leaders. And second is we create templates for every single one of our courses and we create templates in all of the uh, languages that we provide those courses in. Uh, each template has all the resources needed for the training leaders. Uh, obviously each training leader kind of teaches differently, but they have a consistent platform that they can look upon uh, and know where the resources are and uh, they can rely on it. And this makes everything super easy for us as an organization because all we have to do is copy the template, add the pertinent information like uh, date, time, instructors, and then upload it or and then add a course code that connects it to a registration page. And that way, and that way, uh, when we upload users into Moodle, they automatically get added to the course page. And this really takes time. It, it limits the time we have to spend on Mo the Moodle platform, which is great. Uh, and then going along that, the templates really uh, help with avoiding human error, but we do have processes in place to double check to make sure all the participants are correct and all the uh, pertinent information is all correct. Uh, it seems basic, but just making sure everything is always correct and consistent uh, is very important, just looking professional um, and providing a good resource that the training leaders can depend on and the students. And last, we always uh, continue to find a way, ways to make everything easier for everyone. So we do this mostly by looking at uh, participant feedback and training leader feedback. We have surveys on all of our courses, uh, and we're always looking uh, for the areas we lack in so we can constantly improve. Uh, and then also any updates that may be available so we can uh, make sure everything's running efficiently as possible and we provide a consistent, uh, well thought out platform. So we do all this, we have ten th tens of thousands of users and up to 50 plus classes at a time. Uh, and we really only have two Moodle administrators, neither of which, I am one of them, but neither of which uh, is primary, jo primary, primary job is to be a Moodle administrator. Um, it's a secondary job that we really don't have to spend that, that much time on. Uh, we're able to just, it's, it, Moodle is our main platform it's the heart of our operations, and we really don't have to spend any time keep it up and running. Uh, everything's pretty much automated, uh, and the only time is really spent on the platform is if we're adding new languages um, or doing the, uh, the fast routine tasks. So, and that being said, we also have a, one volunteer IT consultant who handles all the back ends of Moodle, but he really, once everything's uh, all set up, once Moodle was set up the first time, we really do everything else. Uh, the only time we contact him is if we want to add a plugin or uh, any issues happen, but this rarely occurs. So we really don't have to spend any of our human resources on Moodle, and it's our main platform, which is amazing. <coughs> it looks like the formatting got messed up when it uploaded, so sorry about that. Um, but I want to put in perspective how we built our international community. In 2012, we started using Moodle. Um, in that time, we were getting about 700 new users each year for our courses, and we were teaching courses in three languages. And in 2021, uh, we gained approximately 7,000 new users. We taught courses in 19 different languages, and we have users in 148 different languages. And the fact that a small, albeit growing, not-for-profit is able to reach such a broad range, like that's three-fourths of the entire world uh, that we have users in. And it's in an area that a lot of cultures don't necessarily uh, accept as much. 
So it's amazing that we can promote neurodiversity and inclusion all across the world uh, with, uh, with ease, basically, um, through our system and our methods of using our platform. Uh, and we can really spend time focusing on our mission and building a global audience and promoting neurodiversity and inclusion. So I want to thank everyone, everyone for listening. Uh, I appreciate your time, and I hope you have a good day. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. So. Thank you. We've got, time. We've got time for one question. I think, Ryan, if you can just wait for the microphone. Do you have any method for providing micro-credentials for people that have completed your DIR floor time course where, you can, where they can take that expertise into a new job or into a new location? Yeah, so, so um, uh, we do have a credential service. We use a credible. Um, we have, uh, so whenever you take a course, you do get, and, and pass it, of course, uh, you do get a credential. Uh, it's in kind of conjunction with uh, the, the professionals that provide the floor time of practice, they're already credentialed to do the practice that they do. So like uh, a speech therapist will be a credentialed speech therapist, but then they can also um, use, they can go through our courses and become a DR floor, uh, floor time practitioner for SLPs. Um, and we have a wide range of uh, different occupations that we, uh, uh, that take our courses mostly the occupational therapists, speech language pathologists. Um, yeah, there's a lot. So.